When I grow up, I always see God as a very far distant God, that I was so afraid of Him. And I was trying to please Him with all my good works and staying pure according to the teaching that I received and growing as a Shiite Muslim, devoted Shiite, Shiite Muslim. And I was trying to just perform the five days, five times prayers per day, and toward Kaaba, toward Mecca, and always doing good things, but I didn't have any assurance where I was heading after this life. And then, because of the wars and because of, um, you know, the situation in the country where I was born and the revolution and seeing all these young dead people, I started to uh, question God. I began to question God. Are you there? What all these things uh, are happening? And always my mom says, be quiet, you're going to go to hell. <laughs> you don't question God. And so I was searching, I was reading the Quran. And what was really astonishing to me that I learned he had, Allah had, uh, has 99 names, that he is mighty, that he is this and he is that. And none of the names was love. So there were too many contradictions, too many questions that I was searching for the real truth. And the greatest fear I have, if I deny this God and Allah, because he's going to punish me, I'm going to head into hell. Even if I didn't have this assurance where after this life I am going. Because I was asking, they said, well, inshallah, we go to heaven. Inshallah means God's willing, we go to heaven. But again... So hard to understand and it really is disappointing to know you live this life without living it. So I went to university and I saw a flyer uh, on the board that they were showing Jesus movie. So out of curiosity I said, well, he was a good prophet. He had so many miracles. My, the prophet that I was believing at that time didn't commit any miracle, didn't have any miracle. So I want to know, I want to see, watch the movie what I'm going to lose. Out of curiosity, I went, and for the first time in my life, I met some Muslim who converted to Christianity, and they were medical doctors, some of them, they were former haji, that they, you know, went to Mecca, so I was saying to myself, I was asking questions, what happened, what led them to come uh, to know Jesus, not as just a great prophet, but as the son of God, as the savior of the world. And uh, after watching this movie, I started to, I began um, again questioning the teaching of Quran because I saw in that movie that Jesus was crucified. Jesus went on the cross because of us sinners and then rose from the dead three days later and his tomb was empty. This is not what I learned about Jesus. And the way he was born, he was born in Bethlehem, which is the teaching of Quran was he was born in a desolated desert so there were so many uh, you know uh, contradictions so after the uh, watching this movie they came to me and we started to you know talk and I started gradually you know to know them but began to argue with them I knew somehow I knew what they were saying is the truth but because of that spirit of fear that fear just grabbed hold of me I couldn't, you know, I couldn't accept, I, or I can say I refuse to accept the truth. So especially when they said all are sinners, we are all sinners, I said no, I didn't commit any immorality, I didn't commit any, you know, sexual immorality, drinking alcohol, for me everything is just, you know, outward. So I started to argue with them because I was so afraid for them according to the teaching of Islam that I received that and the scriptures in Quran that if we deny Islam we're gonna go to hell. So I told them, you're going to go to hell. I tried to convert them back to Islam, but still they keep loving me unconditionally. That was um, the greatest thing that really touched my heart. And for the first time in my life, they, I saw a Bible, a New Testament. And according again the teaching that I grew up with, the Bible has been tahrif or has been changed. And because of that curiosity to see what part of Bible has been tariffed or changed, I started to read and study the Bible. And at my total amazement, not only I didn't see any contradiction <laughs> or any changes, I was just seeing affirmation of God's love from the beginning till the last chapter. One night, 
I was on my knees and I said, God, I don't really want to go to hell. If you are really the one these friends are telling me, please reveal yourself. Please show yourself to me. And out of God's great mercy and grace, he appeared me in a dream. And that night, in that dream that I had, three men in white robes with Roman sandals in the shape of a triangle stood in front of me in that dream. I was not able to see the faces of two of them, but the, the, the one who was, who was standing in front of me just answered my question. The question with which I went to bed. And he said, why you have so much doubt in me? Just believe in me. I woke up. I never had any encounter so closely with God. I never had this personal conversation with God because to me Allah was so far away, so, you know, sitting in high places that I cannot reach. So that's why I go through Imams or, you know, intermediaries to, uh, to ask even if for a simple prayer. And when I woke up for the first time, that peace came upon me because I know all of us has such a, uh, you know, deep down inside of us, there is some void, the, the, there is something empty inside of us, just, just our Creator can fill this void. So I got up and I'm driving to the college, I'm coming back and forth, and this, this dream was like a film, like a movie in front of my eyes. So I called that lady, the former Haji, I said, I had this dream and she said, well, we cannot see the face of the Father or the Holy Spirit, you know who he was, and just by faith, as Jesus asked, if you confess that you are a sinner and give your life to me and believe that I came for you, that I am God and I was, uh, I, I, uh, I, I died on the cross for you and for your sins, I became sin for you and shed my blood to cleanse you from all these impurities and rose again three days later, you are saved. So just by faith, even if still I was questioning about, you know, if Jesus is God, Son of God, because I have the physical concept of Jesus being Son of God uh, in my mind, I had this prayer just by faith by this, by this friend. And at the same time, at the end of prayer, I was feeling like I am a feather in the air. I felt so light. It was like heavy baggages, heavy heaviness was just coming out of me. And one time I read the Bible again, the first chapter of the book of John. Before I came to know the Lord and confess Him as my Lord and Savior, I read the Bible. I didn't have the Spirit of God unless the Holy Spirit revealed that Jesus is Lord. There is no other way. So I read the first verse. In the beginning was God, in the beginning, I'm sorry, in the beginning was Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God Himself. And a voice clearly, as I'm talking and hearing my voice right now, inside of me said, Luke verse 14. And I look at verse 14 and it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and immediately that scale came off of my eyes, and for the first time in my life, confess with all my being that Jesus is Lord and there is no other name given on this in, on this earth under this sky that we can get saved except by Jesus Jesus Christ the Savior of me of you and the world I would tell to my brothers and sisters that the arms of God who created us and who, was, who is so almighty and powerful that even he can put without changing his nature, he can become flesh and say, here I am, I accept you the way you are, you don't have to please me with all this good work that you are not sure even if from, uh, for your eternity, when are you, where are you heading, I accept you the way you are and my arms are so large, extended toward you to receive you with love and I can saturate you with peace and with joy and with love that even if no circumstances in life can take away that peace and joy and love 
because I am the giver of life. I don't take life. I give you life. He said, I knew you by name when you were you are in the womb of your mother. I mean, we are talking about a great and awesome God who can feel our heart. He knows deep down what's going on in our heart. He's the only way. He doesn't say, I am just one of the ways or I am just uh, a prophet. He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. He's everything. That's why he said, when you shall know the truth, the truth, knowing that truth, knowing Jesus shall set you free.